All right, the periodic tables, group seven. That's what we're gonna do today. And the group sevens are basically halogens. Now, um, halogens, they may have va seven, seven valence electrons in the outer shell or energy level. And uh, the pro some of the similar properties of halogens is that it is poisonous and it has a very familiar or it's very similar smells um, and usually halogens when they bond with each other it comes in a diatomic manner it bonds in a diatomic manner di means two atomic means the two atoms so you have two atoms that join together to form a, a molecule or a, a elemental gas so you have your fluorine, your chlorine, your bromine, and your iodine. They all form this X2, X subscript to uh, diatomic elemental gas, all right? Except for uh, iodine and maybe bromine. They, they, they're a little different. And um, these halogens also um, react favorably with hydrogen to form hydrogen halides or uh, acids, okay? So you have your HF, which is hydrogen fluoride, HCl, hydrogen chloride, HBr, hydrogen bromide, and HI, hydrogen iodine. And when these become, you put these gases into um, water, it becomes acid, so hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid. So, as I said again, these halogens, when they become ionized, that means when they have gained an extra electron into its uh, valence energy shell, it becomes an anion, which means a negative ion, all right? And these negative ions in the halogen group are called halides, all right? So you have your fluoride, your chloride, your bromide, and your iodide, all right? Also, these halogens, they react very favorably with metals, elemental metals. So I have a very schematic uh, a generalized equation where you have two moles or two units of a particular elemental metal. This M is a, is a general symbol for all metals with an X2, which is the general symbol for all uh, halogens. And then you form a metal halide, which is a form of salt. So you form two units or two moles of metal halides. Now let's talk about the properties uh, the, the electron structure of, um, of these halogens. So in its atomic form or elemental form, in its atomic or elemental form, it has seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And because it has seven electrons, on the outside, um, it is much easier for the, these elements to gain an extra electron so that the overall configuration, energy configuration or energy level, when it accepts the extra electron, will be lower. It means the energy state will be lower. So it prefers to accept another electron so that the energy level of the ion is lower than the energy level of the element or atom, all right? So here you have fluorine with two shells and the valence shell is, has seven electrons and you have iodine which has many shells, one, two, three, four, five, five shells and its valence shell has also seven electrons, okay? Now, the general trend of 
uh, group seven elements is that when you go down the group, it becomes less reactive, all right? And the reason being, again, if you look at the electron structure, you can see that uh, fluorine is very, very reactive because it has only two valence uh, shells, and the outer valence shell, again, like I said, uh, the, because the, if you have another substance coming closer with fluorine, uh, let's say mm, any group one elements, right? Group one metal coming closer to close to fluorine, the attraction from the nucleus of the fluorine to the valence electron on the metal is very close, and so you have a very big pull from the nucleus of the fluorine to the valence electron, that single valence electron on the group one element. So that electron will jump very rapidly to fluorine to form fluoride, all right? And also, um, the pool between the nucleus of fluorine is much stronger to the valence electrons because there's only one energy level underneath the valence shell. There's only one inner shell inside the valence shell. Whereas iodine, on the other hand, iodine, on the other hand, you have five shells, four of these shells prevents interaction between the valence electrons to the nucleus. So that means there's very little attraction between the valence electrons getting pulled by the nucleus. So it's really, really big. So when it comes close to another element of group one element, uh, the pull from the nucleus, the electrostatic attraction from the nucleus of iodine to the valence electron of uh, group one metal, for example, it's much weaker, all right, because the distance is much further. So there is actually less pull from the nucleus of iodine to pull the valence electron onto iodine to form iodide. So this is a very simplified explanation of uh, why it gets less reactive as you go down the group. Now, the boiling point and melting point of um, group seven halogens increases as you go down the group. And the reason being is that uh, if you look at the physical properties of fluorine and chlorine, these two are very, they exist as gases in their diatomic form. So fluorine is a very light yellow gas. Chlorine becomes a greener yellow gas. Bromine is a liquid with brown yellow gas coming out. Red brown liquid with brown yellow gas, brown gas coming out. And iodine is a solid at room temperature with purple um, gases coming out. We don't really know the uh, state of acetine, so we're not going to talk about that. So, based on the physical facts, uh, physical properties that fluorine is a gas and iodine is a solid at room temperature, we can immediately deduce that this iodine will have higher melting temperature, right, because it's a solid at room temperature, as well as a higher uh, boiling temperature. So, that's it.